Welcome to the WIMIS 2015 Chemical Safety Training for Chem 1077. When you're working with chemicals, it's important to be careful because if you're careless or unaware of some of the hazards associated with those chemicals, you can become injured, you can become ill, or in the worst case scenario, you could die. WIMIS training is all about working with chemicals in the workplace. And exposure to harmful substances or chemicals is a significant cause of fatalities in Canada. So working safely with chemicals is something that's very important. You have a responsibility to educate yourself and protect yourself when working with chemicals. And your employer, whoever is in charge of you in the workplace, is required to help you educate and protect yourself. In this context, even though you're a student, the university acts in some ways as your employer. In this women's training session, there are a number of different objectives. We're going to understand the basic core components of WIMIS. We're going to learn to recognize and identify all of the various hazard symbols and the hazards that are represented by every different type of hazard class. We're going to become familiar with labeling and safety data sheets. And we're going to look at employer and employee responsibilities. And from a practical standpoint, the most important thing we'll learn is that it's possible to work with hazardous substances in a safe manner. So WIMIS is the Workplace Hazardous Material Information System. This is a Canada-wide system that allows people to communicate the different hazards associated with chemicals in the workplace. WIMIS was originally implemented in the 1980s and then was later updated in 2015 to incorporate the globally harmonized system of classification for chemicals. So the globally harmonized system is a worldwide system primarily out of the United States and the update to WIMIS in 2015 includes adjustments that bring WIMIS in line with this globally harmonized system. Originally WIMIS was designed to solve a couple of problems. One, materials in the workplace that were unlabeled so containers full of chemicals where there are no labels, so workers don't know what they're working with. And the other thing that WIMIS is designed to do is to correct inadequate or contradictory information that employers were giving to workers. So historically, employers may have been incentivized to not give their workers proper information, especially if proper information would mean that the workers would request safety equipment or updated workspaces or things like this. WIMIS is backed by legislation that deals with controlled products in the workplace specifically. So not everything is covered by WIMIS. Not everything is what is known as a controlled product. So included in the system is anything that is listed in the Hazardous Products Act and excluded from WIMIS are a whole list of things. So lots of things that are hazardous explosives and nuclear substances and things like this are not covered under WIMIS. They typically have their own separate pieces of legislation. So there are three primary components for WIMIS. These are labels, safety data sheets, and worker education and training. So labels are designed to give you a quick idea of what the hazards are with a product. Safety data sheets are highly technical, very detailed documents they cover a lot of the safety information relevant to chemicals. And worker education and training is designed to give you, the worker, instruction on different hazards and how to work safely with those hazardous chemicals. And of course, the most important one is education and training because without those, you can't properly interpret the labels or safety data sheets. So WIMIS is composed of hazard groups. And within each hazard group, there are a number of classes. There are pictograms that go along with each of the classes, and there are hazard categories that kind of subdivide the classes. We're going to go through all of these things in a, a bit more detail now. So within WIMIS, there are a couple of different hazard groups. There are physical hazards, there are health hazards, and not in WIMIS, but in GHS, there is also an environmental hazard group. Belonging to each hazard group are a number of hazard classes. So underneath the physical, health, and environmental hazard groups, there's a whole lot of hazard classes. And these are just a way of dividing up the hazard groups into specific classes or types 
of hazardous materials. And ultimately, there are way too many classes to memorize and keep track of them all. And we'll see shortly that pictograms are going to help you make sense of that very large amount of information. These are the nine pictograms that are used by WIMIS, and they represent types of hazards. So they fall somewhere between the highly specific hazard classes and the overly broad hazard groups. And because of that, they're much more useful. There's also an environmental pictogram that's not currently part of WIMIS, but is part of the GHS system. And since many chemical suppliers have provided chemicals to Canadian and US markets, you're often going to find that symbol on the labels of chemicals that you might work with or on safety data sheets of the chemicals you, you are working with. So this is the physical hazard group and all of the different classes within it. And you can see that the pictograms correspond to types of hazards. So this flame symbol, this flame pictogram, corresponds to all the different flammable classes. So flammable gases and aerosols and liquids, etc. The oxidizing symbol corresponds to all of the different oxidizing hazard classes, and so on and so forth. And these are the pictograms that correspond to the various health hazard groups classes. And if you've been paying attention, you may have noticed that the symbol for corrosion gets used for both physical and health hazards. And you'll find later that it's not uncommon for pictograms to be used in different contexts. Once you have a pictogram and a hazard class, there are also hazard categories, which are just a way of roughly quantifying the degree of the hazard. So smaller numbers are worse. So a category one is always going to be more dangerous than a category two or three or four. And letters that are close to the front of the alphabet are also going to be worse. So subcategories of 1A are going to be more dangerous than 1B or 1C or so on. What that looks like in practice can be shown in this table. So if you're looking at something that is acutely toxic by oral ingestion, so you eat this material and it poisons you, something that is a category one oral toxin is going to be fatal if swallowed. It gets that skull and crossbones symbol that most people recognize as relating to poisons. Something that's a category two is going to be still fatal if swallowed. It still gets that hazard pictogram. Category three still gets the skull and crossbones. It's still very dangerous but now you'll see that it's only toxic if swallowed, which implies that you would need to ingest more of it in order for it to be fatal. And if you just ingested a small amount, it would only make you very ill. And then you move on to category four, and you'll find that it's no longer extremely toxic, it's only harmful if swallowed. And you may notice that the pictogram has changed. It's no longer a skull and crossbones. It is this exclamation mark symbol and we'll see later uh, how the exclamation point gets used in a number of different contexts. And some chemicals actually end up going to category five, which is relatively non-hazardous. This is something that no longer gets a pictogram and it may be harmful. Because WIMIS is a legally backed system, you're going to see lots of language like that where they don't deal in absolutes. So for all of the hazard pictograms, you're going to find that there are general things that you should be doing, precautions that you should be taking in order to minimize your risk. And these are fairly common sense. They're things like maintaining good hygiene by washing your hands or avoiding touching your face or putting things in your mouth. It's things like wearing appropriate protective equipment like gloves or goggles or a lab coat not returning chemicals to the original containers, and consulting with people if you don't know how to work safely with a material, things like this, that are true for all hazards. Now we'll start looking at specific pictograms. For each pictogram, we'll look at the hazards associated with these materials, and we'll talk about the things that you should be doing to work safely with those materials. So this symbol is for compressed gases. And this is things like 
nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide that are in large metal compressed gas cylinders. These materials are under high pressure. So the gas is at a very, very high pressure. And the main hazard associated with them is that the containers can explode or turn into effectively bombs or rockets if you heat them or you puncture them. Another hazard associated with them is that if gas leaks form, so a crack in the container forms or the valve closing the system is open slightly, uh, you can have leaking gas that expands very quickly and gets very, very cold, and it can cause frostbite if it gets onto your skin. So to work safely with these materials, you want to handle the cylinders with care. Don't drop the compressed gas cylinders. Make sure to be careful with the valve or the cap on top of the cylinder so that it doesn't get jarred in any way. Make sure to keep these things away from heat sources and make sure that when you're using them or transporting them, they're chained in such a way that they can't tip over. This symbol is the one for all materials that have flammability hazards. So gasoline, so a liquid flammable material, acetone, another flammable liquid, propane is a flammable gas, anything that can catch fire easily. These materials are things that will burn easily. They are fire hazards. And in addition to that, this symbol might be applied to things that simply burns at a low temperature or catches fire in non-traditional ways, such as pyrophoric materials that will just ignite spontaneously when they're exposed to air, or things that might catch on fire when they get wet or release flammable gases when they get wet. So when you're working with anything containing the flammable symbol, you need to store the material safely in a designated flammables area and you need to keep the material away from any heat sources, and maybe less intuitively, you need to keep them away from any oxidizing or very reactive materials, because these can cause a fire to start. And of course, you should never smoke when working with or near these materials. The symbol for oxidizing materials is similar to the flammability one. It's an O with some flames on top. Oxidizing materials are things that usually don't burn by themselves, but they provide oxygen that increases the intensity of fires. And oxidizing materials can also cause things that won't normally burn to spontaneously catch on fire. And sometimes if they're exposed to a flammable or a combustible material, they can cause fires to start or explosions. And in addition to that, if you're exposed to an oxidizing material, they can burn you. Uh, they can cause skin and eye damage by oxidizing your skin or eyes. And when you're working with them, keep them away from anything that is flammable or combustible uh, because it can cause a fire, and store them in designated areas, keep them away from heat sources, and again, don't smoke. The skull and crossbone symbol is one that most people are familiar with. It represents something that is fatal or severely toxic or acutely toxic, something that is quickly or severely dangerous. So this is a potentially fatal poison. It can kill you, and if it doesn't kill you, it can cause permanent damage or illness if it gets into your body. And it may also cause skin and eye burns in addition to the poison. When you're working with these materials, you want to handle them very carefully. Um, be very aware of what you're doing when you're working with them. And while you should avoid inhaling any chemical, take extra care to work in well-ventilated areas or wear respiratory equipment if you're working with a volatile toxin. And again, you should store the material appropriately. This symbol is representative of a number of different health hazards. Anything with this symbol is a material that is poisonous, but in a long-term context. It is not something that is acutely toxic like the skull and crossbones symbol. It can cause death or damage over time or over repeated exposures. Anything with this symbol should be assessed because it might cause cancer or it might cause birth defects. It may also sensitize you to the chemical and that can cause chemical allergies. 
and it may also be an aspiration hazard and exposure may cause the development of something like chemical pneumonia. When you're working with these, you want to be extra careful to avoid getting them on or in you. So diligence towards washing your hands, wearing your protective equipment, working in well ventilated areas and that kind of thing. And again, like most of the others, you should store these material in designated places. The biohazard symbol is one that, again, most people are familiar with, often from uh, the media. This symbol is in a circle, unlike all of the other pictograms that are in a red diamond. This is in a circle because it is a symbol that was used in the original Wemyss, but is not included in the GHS system. So biohazardous materials are not covered under GHS, but under Canadian systems, we have lumped biohazards in with chemical hazards. So when you're working with these materials, they are ones that can cause diseases in people or animals. And when you're working with them, you want to take every measure possible to avoid getting them on or in you. Use appropriate equipment and handle them in specific designated areas where there are engineering controls in place to prevent exposure. And one of the problems with biohazards is that you generally don't have a good way of knowing if the material you're working with is going to contain a biohazardous material. So when you're working with them, it's best to have a set of protocols that you just always follow as best practices. This symbol with a material being poured onto a metal bar and onto a hand represents corrosive materials, so acids and bases primarily. These are things that will cause serious irritation or damage to skin and eyes and things that are corrosive to metals. So you've probably seen before in your chemistry lectures that acids and metals will produce salts and hydrogen gas and hydrogen gas is flammable. So you certainly want to avoid adding these corrosive materials to metals unless you're deliberately doing so. So when you're working with corrosives, you want to make sure to keep your containers tightly closed. You want to work in well ventilated areas. And again, you want to store material in designated places. The exclamation mark symbol is very, very broad. And I want you to take this pictogram with a, a pinch of salt. Uh, this material is one that may be mildly toxic and or it may cause skin sensitization and or it may cause skin or eye irritation. It may cause specific target organ toxicities. Uh, it can mean a number of different things and they don't all fall under the same uh, types of hazard groups or hazard classes. So when you're working with a material that has an exclamation point symbol, just take all the usual safety precautions and you're going to have to look at the safety data sheet to find out exactly what hazards belong to this pictogram because it can mean so many different things. This symbol that looks a little bit like an exploding bomb is for self-reactive or dangerously reactive materials and one of the most common examples of this is organic peroxides. So these materials are very unstable typically. They may explode when exposed to electric shocks or to friction or increases in temperature. They may release poison gas with exposure to water. They can do a lot of different things that are typically very dangerous. So if you see this material, you should definitely keep material away from heat. You should open containers carefully. You should be very careful not to drop them or otherwise jar them. And you want to store the material correctly and more than any other pictogram, if you see this one, you should be consulting with somebody who knows how to work safely with the material. The nice thing about this material is that you typically won't be buying them. One of the most common ways that you'll encounter them is through decomposition of a material that you already have. And after going through all the pictograms, it's important to note a couple of things. One, the symbol that looks like a bomb that belongs to self-reactive or dangerously reactive materials does not incorporate explosives. It incorporates things that can explode, 
but not things that are sold as commercial explosives. In the GHS system, this symbol does represent commercial explosives, but not in Canada. The pictogram with a dead tree and a dead fish represents things that are hazardous to the aquatic environment. This is not incorporated in Wemyss, but it is incorporated in GHS, and it's one that you're often going to see. And finally, the exclamation point, in addition to all the many, many things that it means in Wemyss, in the GHS system, it may also mean something that is hazardous to the ozone layer. Something that is worth noting is that the symbols in Wemyss 2015 have been adapted from both Wemyss 1988 and GHS. And because we are in a university environment, it's possible that you may encounter older materials, so chemicals from before 2015. And if you do, you may encounter older Wemyss symbols. Most of them are pretty much the same. The main differences are in the health hazard symbol. The older version of Wemyss had a T over a period, so something that is toxic over a period. Some of the other differences are the self-reactive or dangerously reactive material that is the exploding bomb symbol. That, in the old version of Wemyss, was an R with a test tube. And there are two remaining symbols that have no Wemyss 1988 analogs, and they are the environmental hazard and the exclamation point.